So, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, we will now continue with item number five of today's AFET meeting. It's a pleasure for me to welcome Mr. Miltiadis Vaviciotis, the alternate Minister of Foreign Affairs for European Affairs of Greece, to our committee today. Kalimera. Kalimera. Our meeting takes place against the backdrop of an increasingly tense situation in the Eastern Mediterranean caused by Turkey's illegal gas exploration activities. We all have witnessed an alarming military buildup in the area during the past few weeks, and many of us are very, very concerned by the real risk of a direct military confrontation. I had the opportunity to discuss this issue with the Greek Foreign Minister Nikos Dendias and other EU foreign ministers at the informal meeting two weeks ago in Berlin, and this is where the idea of today's exchange of views originated. The European Parliament has followed the situation in the Eastern Mediterranean very closely. The Conference of Presidents will decide this morning whether a debate and a resolution on this topic will be put on the agenda of next week's plenary session. And colleagues, we will also have the opportunity to discuss all these issues with the Turkish Minister of Foreign Affairs, Mr. Mevlut Shavojulu, this afternoon, late afternoon. Minister, the position of this committee is clear. A de-escalation is urgently needed. We support the Council's clear position of solidarity with our member states, Greece and Cyprus. The European Union must be united on this issue. This conflict can only be resolved through dialogue and negotiations, concrete steps forward creating an environment conducive to dialogue and good faith are needed now. So, Minister, we would like to hear your perspective on the conflict. How does the Greek government see the latest developments? What role could the European Union play? And what are your expectations for the upcoming extraordinary European Council on the 24th and 25th of September. Minister, the floor is yours for 10 to 50 minutes. It's up to you. And then we will have an exchange of views with colleagues. And let me not only welcome all the members of AFET here in the room and also our colleagues in front of the video screens, but since this session is being web streamed, let me also welcome all those who are very interested in what we're doing here in the Foreign Affairs Committee. Minister. Uh, dear David, uh, thank you for this uh, warm welcome. It's uh, very important to hear uh, what you just already stated, that uh, this committee and the parliament is committed to what has been already a EU position, which is a message of solidarity and a message of uh, immediate need for de-escalation on the ground. Uh, before uh, informing you on the latest developments on, uh, in Eastern Mediterranean, I would like to tackle the issue of uh, the refugee camp of Moria, which is uh, something that uh, hit the, the headline news lately, and I know that many of you have uh, great concerns. Uh, what we are trying to do after the complete disaster of uh, destroyed, uh, we have a destroyed camp, we have uh, 13,000 people who have uh, been uh, unsheltered and we try to shelter them immediately. We try also to uh, bring back the security and safety sentiment to the inhabitants of the island and also to prevent uh, any implication for, from the few uh, COVID, uh, uh, COVID identified uh, refugees, COVID possible, uh, positive uh, people uh, that are uh, mingled with all the others. So uh, it's a, a very complicated task. Uh, uh, a great part of the government is already in the, on the island trying to, to find solutions. And we have uh, been uh, receiving a great wave of solidarity from EU member states. And we uh, would like to, to thank governments, uh, NGOs, and uh, political personalities from all over the, the world uh, uh, coming into uh, giving a helping hand. Well, uh, I would like to st uh, st start uh, by saying that uh, 
I would like to thank you and I thank uh, uh, your chairman uh, for the opportunity that you're offering today to brief you on the ongoing uh, unilateral legal and provocative action pursued by Turkey, which gravely endanger peace and security in the East Mediterranean and beyond. These actions, as you may follow them, uh, bluntly violate international law and the sovereign rights of Greece and strongly undermine EU interests. Let me first state that the ongoing crisis on the Eastern Mediterranean is not just another chapter in the turbulent uh, Greek-Turkish relations, but they constitute by themselves a grave threat to our common security architecture. Since 2018, Turkey is performing illegal drilling activities in the maritime zones belonging to the Republic of Cyprus and continues to violate the Greek airspace and maritime zone. Last November, it signed the infamous MOU with uh, Tripoli, an unlawful delimination of maritime zones in the eastern Mediterranean, neglecting the existence of Greek islands like Cretan roads, despite the obvious fact that Turkey and Libya do not share common borders by any strand of imagination. Since then, Turkey's illegal acts and provocation escalating, leading to the inhuman instrumentalization of migrants and refugees last March at the borderline of Evros, where they openly encourage these people to cross into EU territory. This attempt was prevented by Greek and EU forces, and I would like to pay a tribute uh, also to the President of the uh, European Parliament, Mr. Sassoli, who together with the other heads of the EU institutions immediately went to the Greek-Turkish border in a highly appreciated token of tangible solidarity. This summer, Turkey decided uh, to further escalate its aggressive behavior by actively disputing the sovereign rights of Greece. Not only Greece, but also Cyprus. Uh, uh, sometimes we keep forgetting that Turkey is constantly violating the sovereign rights of uh, Cyprus because we have already been accustomed from, from this attitude. This aggression was also directed to anyone challenging in provocative uh, actions and behavior. Let me remind you what happened uh, last June against a French military vessel operating in the framework of the NATO Operation Sea Garden in the central Mediterranean that has been locked by uh, a Turkish uh, frigate. Since uh, July, actually July 21st, Turkey has issued successive NATEX reserving areas within the Greek continental south. Even though we engaged in an informal dialogue under Germany's good auspices, Turkey decided to withdraw using as a pretext the Maritime Zones Delimination Agreement that Greece signed with Egypt after 15 years of negotiations. As a response, it dispatched its research vessels, Oruç Reis, escorted by a number, more than a dozen, military ships in the area, uh, an area that's falling within the Greek uh, continental surf, further escalating the tensions. Turkey so far has uh, disregarded the repeated appeals by EU and others to refrain from this wholly counterproductive stance and to contribute to a climate conduct for a conducive dialogue. Given the situation, my country had also to deploy our own fleet and it's only thanks to our self-restraint that the situation has not involved in a military confrontation, although there were some, uh, some accidents. Furthermore, Turkey at the highest level is officially threatening to go to war against Greece in case they later exercise its legitimate rights. Moreover, it's systematically poisoning its own public opinion distorting reality and cultivating hatred against its allies and neighbors, employing rhetoric that promote conflict. 
The effects of this rhetoric in terms of the views and stereotype it creates will be very difficult to reverse. At the same time, Turkey is spreading fake news that Greece refuses dialogue, insisting its maximalistic claims, as, as they say it, which is actually uh, not, not very, very uh, accurate, since the actual maximalistic claim comes from what I show you, which is the picture of the map of the blue country that actually occupies half of the AGNC, including half of the Greek islands. The Turkish government is constantly using an insulting rhetoric directed both to my prime minister and other EU leaders and tries to cultivate a nationalistic, populistic, and Islamic front. And we should never forget that. To that end, it has also turned the Yasofya, a World Heritage and UNESCO protected site, into a mosque, setting an example of disregard of our values and principles. As I mentioned, uh, Turkey insists that its stance derives from what it calls our country maximalistic claims. But where are these claims in terms of Greece? Greece has just signed two agreements delimiting maritime zones with Italy and Egypt, showing its willingness to find the best possible, mutually acceptable solutions with their neighbors and it constantly states, as I'm doing today, in every direction, that we are ready to conclude similar agreements with other, all the rest of our neighbors. Greece is ready to resolve its dispute with Turkey regarding the delimination of the maritime areas in the Aegean and Eastern Mediterranean through dialogue. And if dialogue fails, through uh, through the joint, uh, 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 the joint move to the International Court of Justice in Hague. We don't want to solve this problem by using any firearms. But this, this dialogue cannot be performed under military pressure and threats. Ladies and gentlemen, I know that you are going to host Mr. Chabusoglu this afternoon. And I would like to, to tell you how we see Turkey, because we believe that Turkey is acting more and more as a revisionist power. Lately, Turkey makes use of military force without any hesitation as a tool to impose its foreign policy goals. It has proven this in recent years with multiple military operations and occupations of territories in Syria and Iraq, while its military forces are also operating in Libya, regardless of Berlin Conference decisions. We must also not forget the presence of 30,000 Turkish troops in Cyprus, but also in a number, number of other countries like Qatar and Somalia. Moreover, in the context of the new thematic agenda of the Turkish president, Turkey is involved in a number of international conflicts, such as in the Gulf, in the Caucasus, while lately it seeks to play a role in Lebanon. It supports Hamas as part of a wider agenda, which includes working with extremist groups in Syria, arms and sends Syrian mercenaries to fight in Libya. It welcomes members of the Muslim Brotherhood and Turkey was among the first to congratulate President Lukashenko on the occasion of his recent re-election, while it maintains close ties with Maduro, with the regime of Maduro in Venezuela. It is therefore obvious that the geopolitical objectives of Turkey are no longer limited to the Greek-Turkish relationship or simply in the Eastern Mediterranean region. They demonstrate that Turkey is a major destabilizing factor in the wider area. This should be an issue of concern of, for the EU and the international community. The Eastern Mediterranean is our vital geostrategic importance. It has a vital geostrategic importance for the EU for several aspects, not only economy, 
but security, energy, migration, transport, tourism, to name a few. EU should urgently assume its role in the region. What is at stake is European sovereignty and EU strategic autonomy. The escalation must come immediately, and it must come from those who are causing the tension. All of the Turkish vessels, both military and survey vessels, must withdraw immediately, given that their presence constitutes a violation of sovereign rights that must cease at once. For all the above-mentioned reasons, we believe that the next European Council needs to send a firm and decisive message to Ankara. While we remain attached to the concept of a constructive and cooperative partnership with Turkey, and we want to see Turkey to amend its way, to put an immediate end to its threats, the military posturing and provocations, and engage in a good faith dialogue aiming at the peaceful resolution of its disputes. Greece can play two roles, as Mr. Mitsotakis, our Prime Minister, is, is said in an article published today that we are going to distribute later to you. Greece, Greece can be a bridge builder for the strengthening of EU-Turkish relations, or can be an obstacle to that. But if Turkey decides to continue its present course, there can be no alternative but to adopt smart and effective measures against Turkey. We must send a clear message through sanctions. EU is determined to safeguard security in its immediate neighborhood of Eastern Mediterranean, and there is no room for provocative and illegal actions and behavior. We must not forget that other countries as well are also waiting to see how we will collectively react to the current situation. There can be no substitute choice if we want to be perceived and treated as a credible global player, truly advocating a rules-based international order. The European Parliament is a guardian of our values and principles, and we count on your support in the hope that common sense will finally prevail in Ankara, in the hope that we may look at the future of working together in peace and partnership. Thank you, Chairman.